Are you looking to build influence? Or maybe to drive more traffic? But bottom line, you want to change the game. You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Business Building Book Club. We're going to give you the tools you need to succeed both online and in person. Brought to you by Coach Molly and Three Pines Leadership. What is it that you need to do in order to stand out in your field? Of any business or background. If you're looking to start an online business, you need one thing. This is where you start, guys. At uh, dot com secrets. Dot com secrets. It's dot com secrets. Dot com secrets is the book. USA Today bestseller. By Russell Brunson. Russell Brunson. By Russell Brunson. Creator of Click Funnels. This guy knows his stuff. This book is flat out amazing. If you're new to online marketing or you need a refresher, you're gonna want to pick this book up. It will change the way that you think about your business. You need to own this book. It will teach you how to create your offers. Building your own email list. I'm interested. This book literally tells you how to go to a competitor, steal their traffic, and use it for your own. Wow. How to put together a funnel. What your niche? 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 Now that makes sense to me. There's just so much information. It's actually a free book. This is a really, really powerful book. This book. Dot com secrets by Russell Brunson. This is a must have. You need to own it. So you can amplify and transform your life and your business today. Welcome one and welcome all to the Business Building Book Club. I am your host, Coach Molly from Three Pines Leadership, and thank you for spending this part of your day with me here at the book club. Every episode, we're going to dive into a new chapter of one of my favorite business books out there, and we're starting season one of the Business Building Book Club with Dot Com Secrets, the first book in Russell Brunson's amazing trilogy. So we are starting with Dot Com Secrets, the underground playbook to growing your company online with sales funnels. And the amazing thing about this book, not only is it full of so many incredibly valuable secrets that will help you launch your business online or grow your currently existing business online, but it's also available absolutely free. All you have to do is pay for shipping. So if you'd like your own copy of Dot Com Secrets, you can head over to leadershipmade.com slash DCS. That's leadershipmade.com slash DCS. If you'd like to touch base with us, you'd like to get to know us, you'd like to keep this conversation going, I invite you to join us on all of our social platforms. You can find us at on our Twitch page at 3-T-H-R-E-E Pines. You can find us at Coach Molly on Periscope and on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. And if you haven't got the announcement yet, we are hosting a fantastic three-day summit coming up in July and you can get tickets absolutely free. You just have to head on over to leadershipmade.com. Invite your friends, invite your family, invite everyone you know. So we are doing secret number four today from Dotcom Secrets. If you're following along at home with your brand new second edition hardcover book, we're starting on page 71. Secret number four, the attractive character. I want to introduce you to our next speaker. He has a successful business online, making millions of, millions of dollars a year teaching men how to get women to approach them. The MC announced, let's stand up and put our hands together for John Alness. I watched John walk across the stage and told us that he didn't normally teach internet marketers how to sell stuff online, but that he knew the secret that almost all of us were missing. He said that we were missing the same thing that the men in his area were lacking when they hire him to teach him how to get women to approach them. Notice that I didn't say how to pick up women, he said. I show them how to get women to come to them. Big difference. Now, how many of you here would like to have customers come to you, he asked. As a self-proclaimed introvert who's scared to death of starting a conversation with people, I quickly shot up my hand. I looked around to see that the majority of the people in the room had their hands up as well. When I started working with a guy, he, the first thing I teach them is a concept called the attractive character. If you want to attract someone, you have to be attractive. And I'm not talking about your looks, I'm talking about your personality, 
He went on on some of the ways that he helps men to pull the elements of their life story to create an attractive character that women would be drawn to. Then John stopped and said, I bet most of you here are wondering what in the world this has to do with you. If you want to get people to be attracted to you and your brand, you need to design your own attractive character that your market will be attracted to. He gave some ideas on the ways that you can do this. And I started taking notes as fast as possible. When I got home from this event, I wanted to start implementing everything I had learned as fast as possible. But this one concept of the attractive character was the thing that made the, me the most nervous. I wasn't quite sure how to do it, so I looked over my notes and I started to blend elements of my own attractive character into the things I was doing online. I started to share the elements into my emails, and I'd tell stories during podcast interviews. And then I... I would speak on stage. The first times I spoke, I was still in school at Boise State University. I was a student athlete in the wrestling program, and when I spoke, I would tell people that part of my story from the stage. I talked about wrestling and coaches and lessons I'd learned from the sport. When it was time to sell at the end of the presentation, I noticed that the people who came to the back to buy my product were mostly male athletes. They would say, hey man, I played football in college, or hey, I'm a lacrosse player. I didn't realize at the time, but my story was promoting the parts of my attractive character that other male athletes could relate to, and it was attracting them into my tribe. A few years later, my wife and I were trying to start a family, but we had trouble getting pregnant. We went through a long process, but after month wi months with a fertility doctor, we ended up getting pregnant with twins. I remember speaking at a seminar, and for some reason, I felt like I should tell that story. I was kind of nervous because I don't usually share intimate personal stories, but for whatever reason, I did share the story with the audience and tied it back to my presentation. Then I made an offer to them to buy one of my coaching packages like normal, but this time something different happened. When I looked to the back of the room, the athletes were still there, but now there was a whole new group of people signing up that I had never seen before. There was a whole new group of people. There were wives, mothers, and families buying my products too. I thought, how interesting. I shared something about my family and suddenly there's a new segment of the audience attracted to, my, to that part of my attractive character. This new audience segment suddenly felt they could relate to me, so they had enough trust to, pur to purchase from me. That had never happened before. Over the past decade, I've been in this industry. I've shared aspects of my attractive character in all aspects of the business. It's in the content I post on all of my social platforms. It's in the ads we run online. It's woven into the sales videos and webinars that, I sell, our, that sell our products and the emails we send to our lists, as well as the fulfillment on everything we sell. The attractive character is the thing that binds people to your value ladder. They come in looking for a result, but they stay because of the relationship they have with you. One of my favorite social media influencers, Jenna Kutcher, once said, a brand is the image and personality the business applies to its offer. The value ladder contains all of your offers, but the attractive character is the brand that you apply to the offers to increase their value even more. I want to share this concept of the attractive character now because it will be woven into everything we do inside of your funnels. You'll be using it in the messages on each page of your funnel and inside the sales scripts and the email follow-up messages. You'll also see it used in your ads and the content you are publishing to get traffic into your funnels. Inside of Expert Secrets, we go deeper into the attractive character. You learn how to use your character to tell stories that break people's false belief patterns so you can serve them at a higher level. How to become a leader and so much more. This chapter is an introduction for you to understand the core framework, but I highly recommend reading Expert Secrets next to master communication between your market and your attractive character. As you start thinking about things that, could incorp that you could incorporate into your attractive character, I want to share with you the highlights from my notes that I learned while hearing John Allenis talk, as well as the things I've discovered over the past decade as I've been developing my own attractive character. I'll start with the elements of the attractive character. Attractive characters have a backstory and they share it often. 
People won't care about any of the successes you've had and they won't follow you or your advice until they know that you've been where they are now. We mistakenly think that the key to, a, to leadership is to posture and to show how great we are now, but the reality is that to have a following, to build that following, they have to know that you've already walked the path that you're taking them on. You must become vulnerable and share the journey that, you, that got you to where you are today. I remember when I first had a conversation with Dr. Woolner about the building out his own attractive character. The first question I asked him, why did you become a chiropractor? He told me it paid well and he got Fridays off. I knew that there had to be more to his backstory than that, so I kept asking questions. Eventually, we got past the surface level reasons and he told me the real story. I was actually going to dental school when my wife got into a car accident. She was in so much pain and I didn't know how to help her. We tried painkillers, went to medical doctors, and noth nothing seemed to work. Finally, someone convinced us to go to a chiropractor. I still remember sitting in his office very skeptical about the process until I watched him put his hands on my wife and get her out of pain. Within minutes, we saw a very noticeable difference, and within a few weeks, she was healed. After seeing that, this man, what this man did for my wife, I realized that I wanted to have that type of impact on people as well. So I changed my major and spent the next few years of my life mastering the skills that changed our lives a few years earlier. And that is why I'm a chiropractor. Do you see how powerful that is? If your chiropractor, your dentist, or your financial planner told you their origin story about why they were here to serve you, wouldn't that change your relationship with them? The same is true in every business. Sharing your backstory is one of the fastest ways to build rapport with people. Throughout this book, you've probably noticed that each chapter starts with the backstory about how I learned each secret. When I speak at events, I share my backstories. In my emails, ads, podcast episodes, sales letters, and more, I share my backstories. I tell my stories over and over again to the point I get tired of telling them. But you have to understand that you will get tired of hearing your backstory way more than your market gets tired of it. So you need to start sharing it a lot. So my question for you is, what are the backstories that you can share that will build a better relationship between you and the attract you, the attractive character and your dream customers? Attractive characters speak in parables. The best teachers in the world teach in parables. Regardless of your beli religious beliefs, if you've read the New Testament, then you've seen how the greatest teacher of all times, Jesus Christ, taught almost any everything during his ministry in parables. As you're reading this book, or if you follow me anywhere else online, You'll notice that I try to teach every concept with some type of parable or story to help my ideas and concepts stick in your mind. For example, when I teach people about the fact that they can make money from selling information products, I don't just tell them that they can. I tell them the story about how I first did it by selling a DVD teaching people how to make a potato gun. That parable now makes the concept real inside the listener's mind and helps them remember the concept forever. I have other stories that I share when I have difficult concept that I need my listeners to understand. One example of this is when I'm trying to sell something to people. I need them to understand the concept of investing versus buying. I could just tell them that buying my product is an investment that will help them, but that wouldn't stick for most people. So I pull out my parable I learned from my wrestling coach, Mark Schultz. The parable goes a little something like this. I had just moved into the dorms and gone to my first practice where I had an awesome time meeting my teammates and coaches. That night, there was a knock on my door. When I opened it, there stood Coach Schultz. He was an Olympic gold medalist as well as the winner of UFC 9 where he stepped into the octagon with less than 24 hours notice and no formal training and destroyed his opponent. As he walked into my dorm room, he handed me a videotape titled Total Violence. The footage held the highlights of his wrestling career. As I took the tape, he asked me to give, me his, give, me my, give him my wallet. 
a little surprised, but too afraid to say anything to the strongest man I had ever personally met. I pulled out the wallet out of my pocket and gave it to him. He opened it, took out all of my money, and handed me back an empty wallet. I was kind of confused, but too nervous to say anything. He then told me, Russell, if I give you that tape for free, you'd never watch it. But because you've paid for it, I know you're going to watch it and learn from it. And with that, he walked out the door. That night, my coach taught me the power of investment, and he was right. Because I had made that investment, I did watch the tape over and over again. And I became a better wrestler because of it. Now, I share that parable almost any time I talk to someone to... I'm going to talk to someone to make an investment with me because I know the potential customer wants success, but I know that they can't have it unless they have to make that investment. Do you see how sharing that parable is so much more powerful than just telling someone they need to make a personal investment? Look through your life and I promise that you'll start finding those parables yourself that can help illustrate important points. You can also draw parables from the lives of others. Just know that when you stop teaching only facts and start teaching through parables, your messages will stay with the audience longer. Start building out a Rolodex of parables that you can use again and again and again. Attractive characters share their character flaws. This next element is one that most people really struggle with, but it's one of the most important ones to share because it makes you relatable and real. You need to understand that every believable three-dimensional attractive character has flaws. Think about your favorite characters in movies, books, or TV shows. Every character that you bond with emotionally has flaws, right? One of my favorite examples is Superman. He's the man of steel. He's invincible. Nobody can kill him. As a storyline, though, he's not very exciting. But when you introduce kryptonite and his concern for the welfare of his family, suddenly he's as vulnerab his vulnerabilities and flaws are shown. He becomes an interesting character whom people care about. If you follow the history of comic books, you'll know that the reason that the Marvel franchise has been able to dominate over DC, even though DC had a huge head start in front of them, it's because of Stan Lee. He knew the characters needed to have flaws for people to re relate to them. Well, initially, initially, all of DC's characters were similar to Superman. Stan Lee's characters almost all started as normal humans with flaws who received superpowers later. Think Spider-Man, Iron Man, and the Hulk. No one wants to hear about a perfect person because you can't relate to them. Yet most of us try to put on a perfect facade for our audiences, thereby alienating the real men and women we're here trying to reach. Conversely, as soon as you're vulnerable with your audience and show them that you're not perfect because you have character flaws, they will start to empathize with you. They'll like you more because you're more like them. You're not perfect. Character flaws harness the power of polarity. Another challenge people face when communicating with an audience is trying not to offend anyone. So instead of being a relatable person, speakers become bland and stay neutral on many topics, only sharing safe things everyone will love. But here's the problem. While that sounds like, a lo like lo the logical thing to do, appeasing everyone, the problem is that being neutral is boring. When attractive characters try to win vote, the votes of everyone, they end up reaching no one. Instead, attractive characters are typically polarizing. They share their opinions on hard matters and they stick to their guns, no matter how many people disagree with them. They draw a line in the sand and when they take a stand for what they believe in, they split the audience into three camps. Those who agree with them, those who are neutral, and those who will disagree with them. And as you start to create that polarization, it will change your fair weather fans into diehard fans who will follow what you say, share your message, and buy from you time after time. One of the best examples of this concept is Howard Stern. He's very polarizing. People either love him or they hate him. But as you can see from his following, people are listening. Think about the podcasts you listen to. Think about the blogs and the books that you read do attractive characters you have bonded with 
and follow? Do they have polarizing effects on you? Are there people you still follow and listen to even though you can't stand them or their messages? It's very interesting that we will spend just as much time listening to, talking to, and sharing things from people that we despise as we do treasuring the wisdom from our favorite people. Yet if any of those characters weren't so polarizing, chances are you wouldn't even know who they are. Being polarizing is kind of scary sometimes. It's scary knowing that once you start sharing your opinions, they will probably be a group of people who disagree with you and will voice their opinions online. If you search for me online, you're going to find out that there's people who love me and there's people who hate me, and that's just the way it is. If you're, ne if you're neutral, no one will hate you, but no one will know who you are either. As soon as you start taking sides on, on important issues, you'll develop haters, but you'll also develop a group of raving fans. Those raving fans are the people who will buy your products and your services. If nobody's talking about you, then nobody knows who you are. It's time to step out of the neutral space and start sharing your opinions. Bring the things you care about out into the open. Attractive character identity. Your attractive character will typically take on one of the following types of identities. You get to pick which one you want to be and once you go over the choices, the right one will probably jump out at you. When you get your identity together, it's going to shape how you communicate and interact with your audiences. The leader. The identity of the leader is usually assumed by people whose goal is to lead their audience from one place to another. Most leaders have a similar backstory to that of their audiences and therefore know the hurdles and pitfalls their audience members will likely face on their journey to ultimate results. Usually the desired end result has already been achieved by the leader and their audience has come looking for help along that same path. I'm sure that there are leaders you will follow in different aspects of your life, and this may be the role that will be the most comfortable for you when communicating with your audience. The adventurer. The adventurer is usually someone who is very curious, but they don't always have all the answers. So they set out on a journey to discover the ultimate truth. They bring back treasures from their journey and share them with their audience. This identity is very similar to the leader, but instead of leading their audience on a journey to find the result, they're more likely to bring back the answers to give them. The reporter. This identity is often one that people use when they have not yet blazed a trail to share with their audience, but they have the desire to. So they put on the hat of the reporter or the evangelist and they go out to discover the truth. Typically, people who use this identity interview dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of people and share those interviews and all they've learned along the way with their audience. This is the identity I used when I got started. I didn't know a lot about marketing online myself, so I started interviewing people. I became a reporter, just like Larry King or Oprah, because I started interviewing all of these cool people and sharing their stories and lessons. I started building an audience of my own. People kept seeing me with these other high-profile people time over time over time, and I became associated with them. My status went up because I was constantly in the company of high-status people. The knowledge and credibility I gained from being a reporter naturally evolved into my coaching career. Becoming a reporter is a great way to start a business in a niche that you're excited to explore. The Reluctant Hero this is my personal identity now, and typically the one that I try to share with my tribe. This is the humble hero who doesn't really want the spotlight or any fuss made over their discoveries, but they know the information or the secrets they have are so important that they must overcome their shyness and share them with the world. There's a moral duty that compels them to share all they know. Many of you feel this way naturally. The spotlight is uncomfortable, but you know you need to be there. If that's you, the reluctant hero is a perfect identity for you. Play the part. Leader, adventurer, reporter, or reluctant hero, you probably identify strongly with one of these four archetypes. Determine which type is a good fit and build your attractive character using the traits for that identity. If you're an adventurer, tell stories of the adventure. If you're a leader, tell stories where you're, you've been, where you are going. If you've chosen the right identity for you, it should be fairly easy to take on that role. If you're struggling to create your attractive character, perhaps you should take another look at your identity. 
attractive character storylines. Becoming a master storyteller is one of the most important roles of the attractive character. Inside Expert Secrets, we go deep into story structure and how to build out your own inventory of stories that you can use. But for this section, I wanted to give you six of the most basic story frameworks that you can use when you're communicating with your audience. Loss and Redemption. Loss and redemption stories are very powerful because they show the upside of going through hardship or meeting challenges. You start by telling about some level of success that, you've had, that you have accomplished, but then because of some trial, you lost it all. This storyline will relate to any of your fans or followers who are currently in a time of loss in their lives. As you tell your redemption journey, they will receive faith and hope that by following you, they can, they can experience something similar in their lives. Us versus them. You want to use the us versus them stories to polarize your audience. You do define who you define as the us in your audience, the people that do the types of things they need to be successful with what you are selling, versus the them, those who don't comply with what you need them to do. Using these types of stories will draw your raving fans even closer and give them a rallying cry against what they don't want to become. Before and after. These are the stories of transformation, and they work great in any market. For example, in the weight loss market, you should show before and after pictures and tell the story of the journey. In the financial markets, you could show your home before your success and then after. Every product or service promises a result, so the question is, what is life like now for you before you applied the result and what does it look like now? The amazing discovery. Every day, your journey will help serve your dream customer. You should be discovering new things that can help them on their journey. Tell the stories about what you're discovering, how it's helped you, and how it can help them as well. Secret telling. You've probably noticed from the titles of my first three books that this is the one I go to a lot. What secrets do you know or have heard from other people that you can share with your audience? Even as a kid, when someone told me that they had a secret, it would drive me crazy until I found out exactly what it was. The same is true online. A good secret can pull someone into your story better than almost anything else can do. The third person testimonial. Sharing other people's successes with your products and services provides powerful social proof. Get as many third person testimonials from your clients, customers, and students as you can then tell their stories over and over. Here's your exercise. Now that I've told you the elements, identify, now that I've told you the elements, identity, and storylines for the attractive character, I want to show you some examples of people in our funnel hacking community who have used this process to build out their own attractive characters. Read through their examples and spend some time in the following exercise defining your attractive character that you'll be sharing with your dream customers. So this is Liz Benny here. So this is the attractive character for Kapow. Name, Liz Benny, a.k.a. the Queen of Kapow. Dream customers, her dream customers have a strong desire to build profitable businesses which in turn allow them to impact the world in a positive way. They believe they are called to do great things, and they seek both financial freedom and personal fulfillment in the process. Elements. Backstory. Playing it safe. One day she found herself sitting in an office working on someone else's dream. She had the degree, the master's, and the safe job, but was still deeply unfulfilled because she didn't feel connected to her purpose. She set off on a journey to finally fulfill her mission by doing something big in the world that made a difference and a lot of money in the process. Parables. Systems create profits. After her first year in business, Liz sat at her table, heartbroken, upon realizing that despite all of her hard work, she'd only made $25,000 that year. Desperate to find a solution, she read The E-Myth Revisited, and from that moment on, she had... A she was addicted to systematizing her business. The following year, she made $181,932 profit. She teaches you how to implement her proven systems so that you can bypass the pain she went through. Character flaws. Dyslexia. 
Because Liz is dyslectic, dyslexic, she sometimes mispronounces, misspells, and misreads words on her slides and presentations. She says, I'm dyslexic on her webinars to let her viewers know that she's not perfect and that you don't have to be perfect to be successful. The unfounded fear of not knowing enough. When she first started her social media management company, she feared she didn't know enough and that her clients would find her out as not being an expert. She realized she just needed to be one step ahead of them and she now shares this story with her on her webinar to let others know that they don't need to be an expert to have success. Polarity. You can be 100% yourself and succeed. Others think that in order to be a success, you have to not rock the boat at home, work, or family. But her fans are sick of being told who they need to be. She shows them that they can be themselves in her Kapow community by being herself, raw, real, and honest, thus showing them that they are able to be themselves and still have success. Scammers suck. Having been scammed many times over the years, with courses being ripped off and people claiming that they had helped her in order to get clients, Liz stands for honesty and integrity loudly and proudly online. People flock to her who are sick of the scammers and want to be part of something that's solid and not smoke and mirrors. Identity. Her attractive character is the reluctant hero because she feels called to help other business owners get faster, better results than she has, with less pain than she endured while creating her business online. Now let's look at the attractive characters for cash flow tactics. Note, if you have multiple founders in your business, this is one way that you can have multiple attractive characters while still representing one brand. Names, Ryan, a.k.a. Captain America, Brad, a.k.a. Tony Stark, and Jimmy, a.k.a. The Hulk. Their dream customers have deep-seated drive for personal freedom. They know that they are meant for so much more, and they're stuck trading their most valuable resource, their time for money, hoping that one day they'll have enough money to buy their freedom back. Elements, backstory, freedom fighter. Ryan discovered the hard way that the conventional passive path of investing in your company sponsored 401k and hoping that it would all work out one day was ultimately a path to being completely stuck. Through trial and error, he forged a path to finding financial freedom and living a purpose-driven life. The Mad Scientist. Brad sees the world through numbers, kind of like Neo from The Matrix. After calculating firsthand that it was nearly mathematically impossible for people to be financially free using traditional Wall Street strategies, he went on to quest He went on a quest to mathematically prove the only path to financial freedom in 10 years or less. The drill sergeant. Jimmy fought for the for freedom overseas only to come back home and realize he lost his freedom in the corporate rat race. He used his internal drive for freedom to discover the path to financial freedom. Parables. Stop fighting gravity. You see, touch, or feel gravity, but when you put it to the test and take a step off the ledge, you learn that gravity does indeed exist. Similarly, we believe that 97% of traditional financial advice is dangerous, misleading, or outright wrong. Like gravity, you can deny it, but you will find out the hard way that you will never be as free as long as you fa follow this advice. Instead, they teach you to revolutionize the way you look at money by doing the exact opposite. Character flaws. Consistently chasing goals. Ryan is consistently focused on personal expansion, so he has to remind himself that true freedom is found in the present moment while at the same time being blissfully dissatisfied. Analysis Paralysis Brad's biggest strength turns into his biggest weakness when he realizes when he relies too much on the data and calculations rather than taking action towards getting results. Ryan and Jimmy help him to move forward without getting stuck on the numbers. The level 10 quick start. Jimmy rarely slows down to think and chases any shiny object that looks fun and exciting. So he has to double down on sticking to his own formula of freedom to gain the focus necessary to have success. Polarity. 
do the opposite. Everyone thinks that to be successful, they have to do what everyone else is doing, just better. But if you do what everyone else does, you get what everyone else has. The only path to success is not doing the same thing better. Instead, it's doing the exact opposite. Goldfish advice. Other well-intentioned advisors are incapable of helping you become better, fin become financially free because they are not financially free themselves. You cannot lead what you do not live. Just as a goldfish swim along with no knowledge of what water is, traditional advisors can't teach you outside of their own knowledge. The traditional goldfish advice of Wall Street. Identities. They each have a different identity in their brand, so their attractive characters are the adventurer, because Ryan embodies the idea of freedom through the intentional living and seeking of adventure. There's the reporter, because Brad uses logic and math to make sure to make the unseen and confusing become logical, sound, and actionable. And they have a leader, because Jimmy uses his drive for action and results to motivate others to get out of their heads and into gear to take action. So I'm going to close the book on this chapter, my friends. That's it for secret number three, the, or secret number four, I should say, the attractive character from Russell Brunson's dot-com secrets. Remember, you can get your very own free copy, just pay for shipping. You can find that at leadershipmade.com slash DCS. That's leadershipmade.com slash DCS. And this episode, I'm going to leave you with some homework because you are going to spend some time focusing on developing your attractive character. So up on the screen, if you are following us on our YouTube page or on our, any of our streaming services, you'll see the visuals. Otherwise, you can pick up your copy of the book and you can follow along there as well. So the attractive character, you need to come up with the name, which is usually going to be your name, and who your dream customer is. That we went into a few episodes ago. So if you missed that, go back, watch that, and figure out who your dream customer is. Then you're going to develop all of those different elements of the attractive character. So you're going to look into your backstory, your parables, those stories that you're going to teach uh, to teach those lessons that you need to teach. And then you're also going to look into your character flaws and what it is that you are polarizing on. And then finally, you'll be able to figure out what kind of identity are you taking on? Are you a leader, an adventurer, a reporter, or the reluctant hero? So thank you for joining me for this episode, my friends. Until next time, remember, I love you and be excellent to each other. Until next time, 